You're listening to Bleeding Blue, a podcast by myself, Adam Cook, showcasing and talking with some of the best athletic talent around Exeter. This production is an extension of my high school media along with other journalism that I do, which includes writing, reporting, and announcing. Today's episode is with Kevin Sands, a senior captain on the basketball team who has stepped up big time this year, becoming a top talent not just in Exeter, but in Berks County. Him and the team look to follow up with more success after going all the way to the state final last year, which we talk about along with Exeter's community, plans past Exeter, and so much more. I hope everyone enjoys the show. Michelle, how are you? Oh, thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, uh, you guys coming off a big win against Reading the other night ago. What was that like? Um, it was amazing, man. I mean, having beat them in I think 14 years or 29 games. So, you know, it was a great win. Um, great team win. Um, I'm just glad that I got to experience that. And I mean, hopefully they could beat them again soon, but it hasn't been done in 29 games. So. Yeah. This is great to be a part of that. It was awesome. It was awesome to watch. Awesome to be there. Um, so, yeah. How do you guys look to use the momentum from a win like that into next stretch of the season coming up? Honestly, like um, like last year, at, around this time, we used Redding's loss at home to pretty much give us a boost of the season. So, I'm glad this year we could use a win to give us a boost from now on. Um, so that win will probably give us so much confidence. Like going into these next few games, our confidence are, is through the roof right now. So, yeah, it's an important stretch coming up for sure. Because you guys are sitting over five hundred, mm-hmm. had some tough matchups, right? But you guys have been good um, so far. What has it been like uh, going through all those hurdles, uh, having so much change on the team compared to last year? Um, it it helps us grow as a team, you know, like we're learning new things every day, every practice, every game, we learn new things about ourselves and each other. So it just, again, helps us in the long run, you know, um, get through different obstacles within each other and against other opponents. So um, there's not a night where we're not ready for something because we get thrown new things at every game. So, yeah. What do you think so far of what you've seen about Coach Van Gorder's playing style, how he's utilizing everyone? Um, how has that benefited the team so far? Um, so far, I mean, it benefits us in a good way. I mean, I I think it's a great way to, to run basketball. I mean, we're averaging the most points in Berks County right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, that's huge. I mean, that's pretty much where the game of basketball is going right now, that fast pace. Uh, get a shot up quick. Not necessarily a bad shot up, but yeah. we could get more possessions on offense, leads to more points, more points leads to wins. So um, I love it personally. I, I think I think everyone loves it. I mean, it's it's more entertaining to watch more points. For sure, yeah. Most definitely. Because everyone's kind of positioning themselves right, a uh, lot of rotation in, so yeah. no stem, or, uh, good stamina. Definitely, overall, so. yeah. What about this team? Uh, this year in particular is special or unique to you? Um, I think how we have a bunch of young talent. Like, yeah, we do have five seniors, and those five seniors have experience from last year going to the playoffs. But you mix that experience up with a lot of new guys, young guys who don't really have the experience. We get to teach those young guys and mentor them and just be a role model for them. So when we get to back to the playoffs, it's not like it's completely new for them or for the team. Like we've all pretty much got a glimpse of what it's supposed to look like. So it's special. It's it's super special. Did you kind of feel like that when you were younger coming up? Like last year you were a junior. Of course you're still an upperclassman, but yeah. you were there were a lot of other guys like Cheese, Zion. Did you kind of look up to them and get that experience when you were younger going all the way to the state championship? Definitely. I mean, like, again, like you said, guys like Cheese, we had six, we actually had six seniors last year, and they all were role models to us, not only on the basketball court, but off the basketball court. They were great guys. So, like, being being a part of that team was, was just special in itself. Um, 
and carrying that over. Like they they did it to us as juniors and sophomores, and now we get to take in their roles and be role models for the younger guys like Carter, Jaden, where Aiden Dabble, all the other juniors and sophomores on the team. Hundred percent. And what is it like being more of a role model, having a different position on this team, everything about that? It's great, man. I mean, I I love mentoring and teaching again kids like Jaden Ware and Aiden Dabble. Like I love teaching them new ways to not only on the court, but again, off the court, being a better person, just helping them for the better. I mean, I think those guys look up to me, Reese, Alex, and Dev, and, and Eddie Gutierrez. Um, and uh, even off the court, we're bestest of friends. Like, like outside of basketball, we hang out with each other and stuff like that. So it's just great being able to help them, not, again, not only on the basketball court, but off the basketball court. Are you motivated by the fact it's your final year, your last run, uh, just coming off of a, a state title appearance? Are you motivated to hopefully get the team back to another deep playoff run? Most definitely. I mean, there's a there's a fire, a big fire under everyone right now because what we did last year like hasn't been done in 50 years. So being able to do that again will really, like, set a precedent and the exposure that we'll get as a community is, is, is will be unheard of. I mean, that and that, again, the motivation part, yeah, it motivates me, Reese, Alex, to get back there. Again, not only for us, but for those guys because I yeah. want it for them more than I actually want it for myself. Like, I want them to experience that Santander Arena, the Hers- Hershey Arena. Like, it was, it was a, a feeling that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Those places are awesome to oh, be super. at. I love watching. I was at a ton of those games, and those were really awesome yeah. to be at. Um, what is it like playing there? You like preparing yourself, you know, in the moment when you're there. What is that all like? It's surreal, man. Like it, it's actually like you can't. You see it on TV all the time, like when you watch college basketball and even the NBA, like playing in those big arenas. It's actually much bigger than it seems. Like mm-hmm. when you get on the court, you look around. It's like, like coming from playing in a high school gym to that is like ten times the more seats, the people, just the whole environment is crazy. I mean, and then when you make big plays in those type of like environments, it's just a feeling like no other. Like you can't, I can't even explain how that feels. You get the whole crowd going, and even. Even, like, silencing the other opponents in such a big arena like that, you could literally, like, just feel everything. And yeah. It's a feeling, again, like no other. I can't even explain it. So, you're, yeah, you were talking about the environment. Does uh, being at home, is that – what kind of advantage does that have to you being behind the Exeter fans? Big advantage, if I'm being honest. I mean, if if we're talking about home crowd, home stadium, everything, like, I put up thousands of jump shots, thousands of everything in, in Exeter's gym. So not only that, but again, playing in front of your own hometown crowd, it's amazing. I mean, you have everyone's support. Um, you have media coming. and It's just like, again, that motivation that we were talking about. It's it's motivation. Like, you don't want to disappoint anyone in, in your hometown. So it's like, I think that that in itself really gives you an advantage, not wanting to disappoint anyone. So you play better, you get more energy on the court, your adrenaline is is even higher. So, yeah. How have you been able to take the next step up this year? Uh, You're averaging over 17 points per game with really good defensive play. How have you been able to achieve that? Um, just the, uh, putting in work, man. I mean, it comes a long way. Like, when when people say like they have to put work in to be better, it's like no, you you have to want it. You gotta want to put work in. And it's like over the summer, I think this is probably the most most productive summer I've had with um, just getting better. And it's because I wanted it, and I knew that coming in, I was gonna have to step up. I mean, from losing Cheese, Zion, Teddy. Um, that's a lot of points that we lost there. Like, yeah. they put up, I think, combined 30 points. So, like, when when you see that, it's like, okay, we have guys stepping up as well, but what am I going to do to provide for my team? 
to help us get back to where we had to be. And that was that was what was going into every workout over the summer. Like, I'm going to have to step up now. And I think, yeah, just staying in the gym, staying consistent was really the key to, to having the season I'm having right now. How many days per week or just overall, how much time were you putting into consistently working on basketball? If I'm being honest, like six to seven days a week. I mean, that, that's pretty much all I did over the summer. I didn't really... I mean, yeah, of course, I hung out with friends, but there was always a time where I had a basketball in my hand every day. Um, you know, working out with different guys around the county, even like Kingston McCoy, and, uh, Alex Collado of Muhlenberg, and Shamar Killen. There's a, a couple guys I've worked with over the summer. Um, but yeah, back to your question. Every single day, I, I, I believe so. Um, mm-hmm. Unless, obviously, I was sick or family things. But yeah, I mean, just... Every day, especially with my teammates as well, like Aiden McGee, Reese, we've, we've put plenty of hours in over the off season. So, yeah. When you're working with your teammates, guys from other schools even, are you able to look up to them, how they're playing, and adapt and improve based off of that? Most definitely. I mean, I, I try to learn something from everyone. I mean, there there's something to always, like, you could always learn something. You could think you're the best at whatever you do, but there's always more to learn. So I try to it, even, like, we push each other. So it's like we're working out. It's, it shouldn't be one-sided. Like, I'm only pushing you to get better. You know, we push each other to get better. And Aiden McGee is probably the one I've worked with the most over the summer, and he's just pushed me to be a better, again, basketball player and role model. Like, I know I'm a role model to him as well, so – I want him to see how hard I'm working so he could take it to the next level when he goes to his senior year. And that that means a lot to me. Like yeah. I hope when he when he gets to um his off season going into his senior year, he could put in as much work as we did, even more than last year. So yeah, yeah definitely. So you're now uh considered point guard right yeah so and that's a lot of work you had to put in changing that uh filling in the shoes of zion right right um what was that like uh what's the change like on that um me and zion like i've i've actually studied zion like last year um i watched some film over the summer on how he controlled the the offense and the defense just controlled the game because you know point guard that's what they do they control everything like so it, it it was a big change, but it wasn't something that I couldn't handle, and I knew that. Like, um, I was gonna take the challenge. Beginning of the season, it looked rocky for me. I mean, I was still just getting my feet wet with that, uh, with playing point guard, and um, I realized that it was the same thing with Zion last year. Like, if if you really look at it, Zion his senior year started the year off averaging like six or seven turnovers a game. He even had a couple double digit turnover games. So it's like knowing that I. I kind of just settled down. I took a step back and really analyzed what I have to do to become a better point guard. And I think it's getting better every game. I think I'm getting better as a point guard every game. So, With always wanting to get better, having that motivation, always putting that work in, where did you originally get that love for basketball, that passion that you have? Um, Definitely big props to my brother, my big brother, older brother. He played college sports, um, college basketball. Um, he's way older than me. He's about 30 now. Um, so it's like watching him, like he was in my shoes as a 17-year-old when I was three or four. So just watching him grind every day, I kind of just picked it up naturally. Um, and then coming here, I actually moved from Brooklyn, New York. So when I came here, it took sports to a whole other level. Um, sports were more you know, organized and more, just more intense over here. So um, watching guys like Stevie Mitchell play high school sports, uh, Ruben Rodriguez, you know, those big names, even Lonnie Walker, um, it kind of just motivated me to get better. And and ever since then, ever since I pretty much moved here, um, kind of just took it to that next level. I really wanted to take this sport serious. When did you move here? Uh, seventh grade, actually. Uh, so 2018. Um, started middle school here, um, and I, I honestly like thank God every day for giving me the opportunity to come here, start a better life, 
with basketball and just other just outside things like you know mm-hmm. so yeah and then and, and having those role models like Stevie Mitchell like I I speak to Stevie Mitchell a lot and he mm-hmm. he's one of those role model guys for me to get better every day because his junior and senior year was it was outstanding so yeah I mean sorry um yeah <laughs> the, those uh it it was a big change definitely coming from Brooklyn to here so it's so much better because you have such a smaller, like, yeah, it's smaller over here. The city is so much bigger over there. But having a, a smaller group of fans, always having your back, it's, it's, it's just a different environment. And I prefer actually playing in an environment like the one I am now because the, the support group is just so much more locked in with you. It's like you, you will always have someone to, to call or – you know, there's so many, it's so small. It's so, like, that. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it, like, but. Like how there's such a sense of community here. Yeah. There's some spirit. Yeah, you yeah. always see someone at a supermarket or, or mm-hmm. somewhere. At wherever you go, you know someone. Wherever. Yeah. It's like, I could go down to Wilson, go to Chipotle in, in, um, in Ber- Berkshire, and I would yeah. see someone. That they they've seen me play, and it, that's a cool feeling. Just knowing wherever I go, I can I know someone, and it's just great vibes everywhere. Uh so do you see yourself playing basketball past Exeter, uh, in the college? Uh yeah, definitely. I mean, that that's a dream. Like that's a dream I always had. Um, I again seeing my big brother play college basketball. Um, it's just something I knew I, that was on my mind, and I, I had to do it. Like, um, My parents weren't really in, big into sports, but I wanted to be like that gen, the first generation to really take it to that next level, like to that big, big-time stage. So um, definitely, I definitely want to play college um, and even beyond college, hopefully. Have you uh, dabbled in any recruitment yet? Most definitely, I have I have offers. I have about nine, ten now, um, and counting. I have co- coaches coming every game to see me, which is a blessing in itself. That's awesome. Um, and I want to thank Coach Van Gorder for also helping me with that. I mean, mm-hmm. um, and even Coach Ashcroft from last year, they they both like done an amazing job helping me with recruitment. Um, they they Coach Van Gorder has been getting coaches to come watch me, watch me over Huddle and YouTube and. It's just an amazing it's it's an amazing feeling knowing you have support groups behind you help trying to help you to get to that next level and you could trust those type of guys you know to yeah. you, you always have someone it's not like I'm in it by myself so always appreciate that I never really thought about that you know having coaches of course they're always behind your back or uh, behind you but uh never really thought about that as a crewman so that's awesome yeah um, as a senior, what do you think you're going to miss the most about Exeter? Man, I'm going to miss a lot. But going back to that community thing, like just going going to the supermarket and seeing a bunch of people who have seen me over the news or mm-hmm. they just know me from playing Exeter basketball. Or, and, and my friends. I mean, the memories we've made, definitely I'm going to miss that a lot. So um, the, the connection I've connections I've made with different trainers and – different coaches I didn't ha- I had since the seventh grade and it's just probably the people I'll miss the most of Exeter just great people I- I've never ran into you know someone I didn't like over here so it's like that's what I'm gonna miss the most about Exeter yeah basketball has gotten you a lot of recognition whether it's some media coverage or just people watching you play all your talent and so, what is that like? Always being being known for that. Does that make you feel good? It def- definitely makes me feel good. Um, it's it, it's a blessing. Again, it's a blessing being able to uh, get interviewed and knowing that people are coming to watch you and, and obviously the team. Um, but you know, getting having that is like is just it's more motivation to play better. It's like you don't want to disappoint any media or any fans coming to watch you play. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, again, it's, it's a blessing being able to have that recognition and exposure. How excited are you for uh, 
the rest of the season going forward. Super excited. I have a couple games uh, marked on my calendar um, that I'm very excited for. Uh, more excited for playoffs, honestly. Yeah. Um, but in order to get to playoffs, we got to win games, get through this season first. So we're taking it game by game, but I'm very excited to see what this team has in store. Because I don't think any – you got – people have seen a glimpse of what we're capable of against Reading. So I think we have more in the tank, and I'm excited to see when we reach our full capability. What do you think is the final goal for this team? What, what we did last year, but better. Like we mm-hmm. went one for three on championships last year. So whatever is better than that. If, if, if it's two for three, if it's even three for three, we want to win. We just want to win games, have a better record. We finished 27 and seven last year. So I want to finish 28 and six. So whatever we did last year, but better. Yeah. How do you think you guys are going to get there and achieve that? Um, honestly, that, I mean, coming, that comes with winning games and what comes with winning games is trusting each other. And I think trust is probably the main thing that's going to get us there. I mean, last year, uh, our chemistry brought, brought us there. I mean, we weren't the most talented group in, the, in PA. We weren't the most athletic. We weren't the best at anything, but what we did have is trust. I mean, five guys averaged double digits last year. That's unheard of anywhere you go. Um, so, again, but we trusted each other last year. And trusting each other, we made it to the state final. We made it to a district final. We made it to a county final. So I hope that kind of, like, trans- transfers over this year, knowing that trusting each other will get us there, no matter how talented other groups are that we play, no matter what the circumstances are. If we trust each other, we will get to where we want to be. Do you think part of that trust and that chemistry that you guys have built up has been being at Exeter, being an Eagle, always wanting to achieve more? Most definitely. I mean, it, there's no, like, the sky's the limit with us. I mean, we talk about it every day, going back to, to the final. And we don't want to dwell on last year. Like, we don't want to really just always talk about last year because we're always moving forward. But that just gives us more motivation to, to achieve more, like you said, and um, yeah, like that that's number one in our minds, just being able to do what we did last year, but more. I know you've mentioned a few uh, teammates, a few coaches, your brother already, but has there been anyone else that you uh, has been notably helpful for you down the line uh, that has allowed you to be who you are today as a person, as an athlete? Definitely. There's a few people... Um, my guy Alex Bernhard uh, out of New Age Hoops. I mean, he's he's a small business. He he trains kids, um, and mostly in the Berks County area. He's helped me big time. Just become a better person, a better athlete. Um, Tubby, my guy Tubby Workouts. He's he's um, trained professional athletes. Lonnie Walker. He's trained um, Stevie Mitchell. He's trained. He's trained overseas players, and he's helped me become a tremendous basketball player. Helping me with my point guard skills and just becoming a better basketball player. And then um, other shout-outs. I want to shout-out Mr. Wise, uh, Earl Wise. Helped me with recruitment big time. Helped me at the AAU level, club basketball. Um, Miguel Diaz, again, just different coaches, different trainers who, who, yeah, they helped me with basketball, but it's just more than, it's more than just basketball with them. They, they want me to succeed outside of basketball, become a better man, um, everything. So... I can't thank them enough for that. All right. Is there anything else you want to add on? Um, just stay in tune. Um, <laughs> you know, that re- again, writing was a sneak peek. So, yeah. Pete, you guys are going to see a lot more from where that came from. Um, and the, let's just go get this county chip. Let's go <laughs> get this district chip. Let's go. Let's get it. This could be awesome. Yes, sir. So, good luck at, uh, at home against Wood Valley tonight. Um, this will be up after that, but hopefully that goes well for you. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, appreciate you coming on. Thank of course, you. yeah, thank you. Thank you again to Kevin for coming on the show, and thank you to everyone listening today. To stay tuned for more Bleeding Blue, hit the follow button wherever you're listening, and check out my website, adamcookjournalism.com, as well as my social media, at adamcookjournalism. Thank you for supporting local athletes in journalism with Bleeding Blue. This is Adam signing off. <laughs>